So it's been flipped, and the balls are still there. Yeah. Okay. So the camera should be functioning still, and it should see us. The camera should see us come up. Take them. And and there's the camera. touched it. it looks like it's still filming okay it looks like it's still filming see the glass mm -hmm. okay and you can see where it was at yeah. okay okay so I'm gonna kick it off 20 <laughs> did I only see 20 on there really don't tell me it caught us putting it up and then coming in putting it up and coming in don't. Hold on. Eighty. So the battery, battery's life's at eighty-three percent. So the batteries are still functioning, and there's only twenty of them on there. Okay, there's only twenty. I'll get on that side because I'm going to leave. Okay, get out of the way. Keep going. I don't want nobody being seen on film. Okay, everyone. Uh, this is Chris. Okay, now uh, let's go ahead and start the uh, the exhaustive breakdown uh, of the uh, of all these uh, these clips right here. Okay, remember when I had said that uh, the camera had taken twenty clips? Okay, uh, this is just a snapshot of when I uh, uploaded the uh, card to my uh, computer and everything right here. So you can tell there is one all the way through twenty down here. Okay. All right, so there are 20 clips, and we've established that. All right, so here's the time period and the dates involved. When we first deployed the camera, it was on uh, the 10th of February, as you can see right here, okay? All the way through, uh, you see the 10th, 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 okay. This is mostly just us setting up the camera, and then when we walk away uh, from the camera, you'll see this uh, as I'm ripping a piece of tape off as I'm going away from the camera. Then we have the 11th, there was a couple clips on the 11th, uh, the 12th, 12th all the way down through here, okay? But uh, the thing that got me was, rem remember I had said that there was a, uh, a cold front that came in. It was a lot of wind, I distinctly remember there was a lot of wind, there was some rain, uh, but there was a lot of wind, okay? So I went back and I had looked up the historical records for the weather, and we're going to go over that as well so you can see just how strong the wind was. Uh, one thing I want to bring out to your attention is, uh, I don't know if you had caught it or not, okay, but this is very significant, all right? This is on Valentine's Day the, at nighttime, at, right at 10 p.m. on nighttime. This is the last clip that was made all right prior to mark and i walking in on the 21st okay so we got a seven day gap of time here and that raised a uh, red flag for me it made me suspicious right away of how in the world can we have a loss of seven days on the camera okay when i knew good and well bad weather came in i, I was expecting to see hundreds and hundreds of clips of just of just wind uh, blowing around and rain and everything like that. So that's what I was expecting to see. So uh, we're going to go ahead and we're going to focus a little bit on this time slot right here. Then we'll look at the weather and then we're going to go ahead and crank up the video editing tool so you get a, uh, a, a real first-hand account of what we're looking at here. Okay, so let's go ahead and go to the historical weather right here. Okay, all right. Remember I told you the date, okay? Remember I told you the date to remember, okay? Valentine's Day, okay? The 14th at 10 o'clock at night, okay? So remember that, okay? 14th, 10 o'clock at night. All right, so this is the weather historical data for uh, this time period right here, okay? This, this is for the whole week, and it's February the 12th through February 18th, as you can clearly see. 
All right. So the one thing I want to point out to you is I'm going over this because I'm trying to identify why the camera had a loss of seven days when clearly we should be having pictures of just storm pictures, you know, and it doesn't make any sense. Okay. So this uh, graph and these charts right here focus on that whole week, that time period of week. Okay. As you can see, all right, we did have some per uh, uh, precipitation. Okay. Just a little bit, not a lot, but there was some, right? Okay. The uh, the maximum temperature is 81, mean temperature is 72 uh, for that whole week. Wasn't something really drastic, but we, like I said, we did have a cold front, so it dipped down to 48 degrees, uh, and the high was uh, 71. So it did get a little cold during that week. Okay. So we've identified that we did get some rain, all right? But here is the key point right here, the wind part, all right? This is where I just, it doesn't make any sense, okay? We had wind gust, okay, during that week after the cold front came in. And you can see them. They're right here. This is where the high points are, okay? You have basically Valentine's Day right here that night right here, okay? And then you have all these wind gusts. I just don't understand why the camera didn't, didn't record any blowing trees around during that seven day gap. But look at this, okay? We have 24 mile an hour winds and gust up to 39 miles per hour. It just doesn't make any sense, okay? All right, we'll come down here in this chart right here, all right? And this is the, like I told you, remember the 14th, the night of the 14th, okay? If you look at this data right here, you don't really see anything that was terrible out of the way of why a camera malfunction would have taken place. I mean, it just doesn't seem to be any malfunctioning because that's the first thing you think of is, oh, you got a camera malfunction, okay? But but when you look at the data, people, okay, on the 15th, all right, right here, okay, that seems to be the most drastic weather that took place with wind, fog, rain, thunderstorms came through because, like I said, it was a front, and you have wind, 24 the average was nine, up to gust of 39 miles per hour. Okay, this is where it just doesn't make any sense. Okay, all right, so let's get the weather out of the way and let's just go ahead and go to the charts. All right, and this is the edit, this is the video editing software. All right, we're going to get down to the point. We're going to explain some of these clips right here. Okay, so let's back this on up just a little bit more. I'm gonna go all the way down here where we see. Uh, Mr. Uh, you know, this is when we left right here. This is when I'm pulling the tape away. Okay, let's go ahead and put this on movie right here. Play it one more time. All right, this is when we're walking away. You notice the date right here. Okay, now stop. Okay, this is the, the same night. Okay, as you can clearly see that Mr. Raccoon had uh, checked out the area. And I had long suspected that there was probably a raccoon at play here because they're very... They're very crafty and, and clever little critters, that's for sure. Okay. So let's just take a look at him and some identify some things with him. Yes, he's just a raccoon, but he's got a partner in crime is what it looks like back up in here. Um, but I'll point out some things here before we get to the, the night of the 14th, okay? So let's just let this guy jump on the fridge right here. Okay, so here he goes. All right. He leaps up on the fridge, takes a little sniff around. As you can see, his eyes shine. All right, let's pause that and back that up a little bit. I want to point that out. Okay, see his eyes shine. Okay, he's not even looking at the camera. I will note this. He's not looking at the camera. He's looking down. All right, but so you can still see eye shine. Okay. All right, so you can clearly tell he's not interested in the cup. The cup has been left alone. He jumps down. And now he's fixing to go ahead and he's fixing to attack the camera. He's fixing to smell the camera and crawl up on it and get all in the camera. And he's making his way. Let's see if he makes his way on up. Okay. Same night. Now he's pulling on the camera. Here it goes. He's tugging. He's making his way on up. And I was thinking, daggum, you know, he's just going to pull my camera completely. You know, he's going to pull it completely out of frame and you won't be able to see the cup no more. And so I'm thinking, okay, good. <laughs> still, you can still see the cup. Okay. 
All right, so here we go. We're on the 12th. All right, so let's back that up again. Make sure we caught that, okay? 718 on the 11th, okay? But I want to say I thought I had saw his friend's uh, eye shine going on back here. So let me just back that up right here a little bit. I thought I had saw the eye shine. There it is. Okay, there's the eye shine popping up right there. Okay, so I thought I did remember correctly, and the eye shine is popping up. You'll see eye shine popping in around here, and I think that's just a partner in crime with him. Okay. Let's see if I got... There's more eye shine right there. And back that up just a little bit more. There it is. You can see there's eye shine. Okay. So I don't think that's, that's necessarily so significant. Um... But um, what I can do is we can we can try to zoom in on it with the magnifier. So let's see right here. Okay, we'll double click that guy. We'll make it. Uh, let me see where it is. It's back down here, if I remember right, is where it was. Okay, so let's expand this a little bit more. Okay, so we can see eye shine right here. So let's back that up and let's just take a close look at that eye shine. What's going on with it? All right, so there's the eye shine peaking. You can clearly see it. Okay, and I don't know if he went on, but if we can expand it some more. Okay, there's the eye shine glistening right there again. Okay. So it is just my guess, okay? It's it's just my guess that uh, that's a uh, another raccoon back there. I don't have enough data on it. I can't see it well enough. I'm just saying I just think it is quite possibly another raccoon that's off possibly in the distance just watching this guy because I think they often do travel in, in uh, groups. Okay. So uh, as these clips go by, it's basically these clips are just uh, the, ra the raccoon coming back at different points in time. On the 12th, we're looking at on the 12th again, this is when he's, he's crawling up on the, on the camera again, okay? He's probably going to smear my lens, you know, he's just looking at it. There he goes, he's looking around. I'm thinking all along time. Okay, you can still see the cup back there. Okay, see the cup? Cup hasn't changed. Balls are still there. Okay, so the cup is still in frame. And we're looking on day 12. Okay, so cup has still not been touched. So he's really pulling and tugging. He's fixing them. Tug it right on out of frame here. Here it goes. Cup's still visible. And he's jerking and tugging, that's for sure. He's wanting to sniff on it. All right, so let's see. All right, so we're still on the 12th. Still early in the morning, okay. Cup, still not been messed with. Okay, all right. Uh, Still going on. He's still a very persistent little guy, though, right? But as you noticed, okay, it's noticed he's pulled on it so much to the point that it's that it's uh, you no longer can see the fridge and it's out of frame. But it's not so high, okay? It's not so far out of frame, all right? And I've analyzed it, and I'll and I'll take it to this clip as well, okay? It's not so much out of frame that you should not be able to see uh, the refrigerator is just right about right about up in here it's not so much out of frame that if somebody or if uh not somebody but if the critter jumps back up on it you should be able to see him up on top of the fridge okay all right so here we are we're at a pivotal point and we're looking at the clip that's that's going to justify or give us some kind of clues of why we are seeing a seven day gap okay and this is where we're going to spend a little bit of time at all right so I don't know if you had caught it early before in the earlier videos, okay? Um, but I think what's going on in, in, in this uh, particular clip that's on Valentine's Day night, okay, is it appears to be, and I'm just going to say it appears to be, because all I have is what you're looking at as well. It appears that something 
possibly is poking a tree branch in over here in the bottom corner right here. Okay, a little tree branch. So I'll let this play. Well, it looks like a tree branch to me, a small one that's coming in the frame. So I'll let this play and we're going to blow it up and we'll look at it and we'll see what we got going on right here. Okay, there it is. Okay, something starts to come into the frame right here and we'll let it play. Okay, see it right there? It's just barely. All right, it's poking in and out. Okay, going in and out, in and out, in and out. Still there. Okay, now it's pulled back. Okay. So when I saw that, you know, you have to you have to run down and you have to say uh, you have to really say to yourself, why was the camera triggered? Okay, what was the triggering event that triggered the camera to start doing the filming? As you can see, there is a subtle movement going on right here with the palm with the uh, palm fronds hanging down. Okay, as I bounce around, you can see there is some subtle movement going on. Okay, there is a cold front on the way, but it has not hit yet. Okay, there's a cold front on the way. It's probably maybe another 100 miles away still. So, as you can see, you can see the movement as I pull the cursor around. All right, you see how the, the fronds are moving back and forth. And I think that m might have contributed to a triggering event or not. Okay, or possibly it is this thing down here in the bottom corner that's coming in that might have triggered uh, the peer sensor and kicked off the camera okay I don't know but I do know there's movement going on right here and let's just take a look at this in more detail okay so as we go through some of these things I want to identify some reference points okay because we need to see within seven days how much this camera moved as well okay so you see this tree trunk right here, all right, right here over the PM. That's a reference point. I'm just going to click right there. Same trunk right there over the PM. It hasn't moved a whole heck of a lot. This right here is right next to the M, this branch right here, okay? And that moved just subtly just a little bit over here, this part right here. And you can identify the rest of these points. I'll bounce them around, okay, as you see that right there. See this right here, the little the little triangle pattern right here, and back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Okay, this branch is right there. So we've identified the camera did subtly move, but not a lot. I mean, not significantly a whole heck of a lot, but it did move just barely. All right, so let's go back here. Let's highlight this clip right here, and let's just go ahead and expand this guy. And we're going to put some power tools on it and we'll go crop this thing. We'll go get a better look at what was going on down there in the corner. All right, so we're going to take the cursor. We're going to put it right about like that. And we're going to bring it down here in the corner and snap it in the corner. We're going to pay attention to this little spot right here. And we'll get it just a little bit more. See if we can make it a little bit better. And we'll pull it on down. Bam. Okay. Now we're going to drag this little cursor right here all the way down to the, the end of it. I think it stopped moving somewhere right here. Okay, and we'll just take that and we'll tell that to duplicate the, the uh, previous frame. And there it is right there. Okay, so let's say okay. All right, so now we're starting on uh, the night uh, of that night. Okay, and this is the area you want to pay attention to right here. All right, so let's just let this uh, play. I'll put it on movie mode right here so it can go into the, the next clip. So let's pay attention and let's see what happens. Okay, there it is. There's something coming in. And there it is. It's coming right there. As you can see it, it's moving in and out. There does look like, it does look kind of like a twig. Okay, let's back that up some more. It does look kind of like a like a small twig with some leaves on it. Maybe like it's a, an oak branch. Okay, there it is pulling right there. Okay, I'll stop it right. I'll stop it right there. Okay, some of the things I had to consider. Okay, I had to consider was this uh, possibly a spider's web uh, in the foreground of the camera. 
you know, where it's kind of close to the camera. Is there a spider's web going on here that's just subtly moving in the wind? I don't think it was. Uh, I think it's uh, something more uh, towards the background that's going on right here. And um, so I consider the spider's web. I considered uh, what if it's a, a, a raccoon moving around, you know, where their face is uh, white uh, around their eyes. And I thought about, is, is this a raccoon? And then I got to thinking, no, no, it can't be a raccoon because uh, we done did the eye shine test. Uh, even if the raccoon is not looking at the camera, you can still see eye shine. So we should be seeing, if this is a critter going on back here, we still should be seeing some type of eye shine. Okay, so we'll let this play uh, one more time right here and just watch it. And there it is, it's poking in, kind of coming in. Maybe this is what really actually triggered the camera. And as you already know, the, the camera has about, I want to say it's about almost seven tenths of a second before the trigger is pulled on the camera. And we're going to go right into the next day. Okay, right next day, bam. All right, and this is the same spot again. All right, right here as well. Okay, so as you see, this is the 21st. Uh, the camera is fully functioning. We've got a seven day loss of time right here, seven day loss of time. Okay, and the camera is fully functioning as we come in and retrieve the camera. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the same thing. We're gonna focus on this uh, a little more detail right here. Uh, so let's see if we can see if there's something there or anything like that that we could have mistaken or anything like that. So let's put the tools back on. Put back in power tools. I'm going to do a crop right here. All right. So let's go ahead and crop it. And we're going to bring it on down right here like that. I'll drag it off to the corner. Snap it in place. Okay. Drag it all the way down a little bit right here. And I think I come across right about here. So let's just say duplicate previous keyframe. And then get, so here we are. So it'll stay in the same span as we as we do this. Okay. All right. So now we've zoomed in on it and we're retrieving the trail cam. So uh, zooming, you know, it adds more uh, granular. Uh, you know, it adds some granular, granular aspects to it, but what we want to see is if we want to see if there's anything still here in this area. When I looked at it, it looks to me like there's just nothingness in there. There's just space in here. So let's just let it play. Okay, I don't really see any spider's webs around that. Sam, if there would have been a spider's web it, with them. Gus maybe would have had something to affect with it, but okay. And that's just us getting ready to come on in. All right, there's I'm coming in with the camera. So let's do that one more time. Transitioning. Okay, you see it moving around. Let's put it in movie. And there it is right there. Okay, and then that's really it. So, and there we come with the camera. So, um, I think what we really got going on here is I I think uh, the actual the actual triggering moment it has to be one of two things. It was either the movement of that frond, or it was the movement of this what I believe is to be a uh, a little bit of a tree branch, a small twig with some leaves on it. If in fact this possibly is a twig with some leaves, that's not being done by critters by no means. They're not going to carry that in their mouth and wiggle it around in front of the camera. Okay, what it could be is that is that these guys, okay, what it could be is these guys have the ability to be able to see, in fact, in infrared, okay? And just like a flashlight uh, turns on into the darkness and you're able to see the beam of light, so is also one of these guys possibly waving something in there into the beam of light to maybe trigger something. 
because they trigger something because in fact if they can see infrared they're doing something to trigger the light and the light comes on it makes it makes perfectly logical common sense I'm not really coming up with anything here that's that's uh, you know that is totally out of the ordinary or anything like that at all it could be possibly that uh, they do see in fact infrared and they and they're able to see the beam and this is why they're able to defeat trail cameras um, so that's just my my analysis of it if I'm wrong it's okay uh, you know if I'm wrong it's okay to be wrong but I think this is uh, more than likely what's really going on here um, is just possibly a small little oak branch that's trying to trigger the camera and in, in my opinion they uh, they know what they're doing and they're playing games and um, oh yeah and oh by the way as you saw when we did walk in the cup was flipped up right <laughs> okay so we still don't know what flipped the cup around okay the cup was turned up right as you saw in the video and we don't know what did it okay so that frustrates me some more so Mark and I discussed uh, what we want to do again is we want to go ahead and can continue to play the game and uh, I'll find a way to strap that camera down a whole lot more uh, rigid maybe not on that palmetto uh, to where we can be able to where it can be fastened down tight and then we'll be able to keep it on keep it on there and I want to see what's flipping that cup around because we still don't know what flipped the cup around okay but it wasn't so far out of frame it was not so far out of frame that you could not see uh, a critter or something like that jumping up on top of it as a matter of fact I'll turn I'll turn it off right here and uh, let's see if I if I can bring that out okay put it back on tools turn off the uh, crop right there bam okay there's the crop okay so I don't think it's let's find something right there where we can still see the fridge okay let's go right here not right here I don't think it was so high yeah I can probably use this as a reference marker I don't think it's so high because you can see you can clearly see this spot right here in the frames okay and I just don't think it's this distance right here is so high that you couldn't see a raccoon or a hand or something like that coming up in here and flipping it around again okay so let me just move this over a little bit more there right here yeah there is probably a better one right there okay so yeah you can see that right there all right now, I just don't think it's so high that I couldn't have seen a raccoon if we would have seen a raccoon or something jumping up here and mess with that cup we still should be able to see probably at least uh, half of his body up on top of that fridge okay so I'm done with my analysis I, I hope you uh, enjoyed the video very much and I hope it wasn't too long winning on that, but I wanted to be in very uh, much detail with specifics and using the power of the, uh, the editing uh, software right here. So until uh, the next video or until we go out again, I hope everybody enjoyed the video and have a good day.
so it's going to flip. And the balls are still there. Yeah. Okay. So the camera should be functioning still, and it should see us. The camera should yeah. see us come up. And, and there's the camera. Okay, I'll clearly document it. 